the witching hour. It is after midnight, just an hour to go with me. And we have got our super fan this week. He's a super fan of Star Wars. So if you're a fan of it, it's going to kind of like uh, be... He's got so much stuff, so much stuff. And the passion with which they talk absolutely astounds me. We need more of them. Caroline Martin. Now, it's Super Fan Thursday. In fact, it's Super Fan Friday because we're into a new day now. We're just a bit late with this. Uh, but I want to invite people on this show to share their passion for something. It could be anything uh, from music to knitting. If it's a big part of your life, then you're a super fan. And I want to hear all about it. Now, this week, I'm joined by someone who is a huge fan of one of the most popular film franchises in the history of film. We are, of course, talking Star Wars. So good evening, Craig. Hello, Caroline. Nice to talk to you, Craig. You know my secret, don't you? Yeah, where do we start with you? I, I'm so sorry. I have tried. <laughs> I have tried so many times to watch it. One of my first dates with my husband, we went to a cinema uh, in Cambridge and he was very excited. He said, you're going to love this. I was asleep within five minutes. And oh. uh, every time I try and watch Star Wars, the same things happen. I, it, they go over my head. I, can you forgive me? <laughs> I can forgive you. Maybe you've just not found the right flavour of Star Wars. Maybe that's it. Maybe <laughs> that's it. But you clearly have, because you're uh, tonight's super fan. So when did you get bitten by the Star Wars bug? Uh, I would have been, I think, about seven or eight when I first saw it, back in 1978, Doncaster, with my dad. And I was just the right age for it. And it just captured my imagination and was something that stayed with me all the way through my childhood. You know, I put it aside in my teenage years. You know, it wasn't quite as prevalent back when I was getting into girls and music and things like that. Um, but I, you know, I was soon back into it um, when I reached about 18. I found some old figures in a in a junk shop and, and bought them. And it, and it sort of made me get all my old toys down from the loft and I've been a collector ever since. So what are some of your favourite items then? Because I think that if we went through every single item, we might be here for some while, uh, I'm sensing. So what, what are some of your favourite things? Well, I think when people think of Star Wars collectors and the, the old uh, merchandise, I think of the toys. Um, they are, I guess, the poster boys for the hobby. Um, everybody remembers the action figures and the ships and... You know, I had those along with lots of other kids and, and I managed to put together a, a nice collection of those today. But for me personally, I really liked those little things that were everyday Star Wars, the things that you spent your pocket money on. And one of my favourite items of all time is a little Star Wars pencil sharpener in the, uh, in the shape of the Death Star, uh, which is something that kids had at school. We had the pencil cases, we had the collector's cards, we had the rub down transfers that came on the back of the shreddies boxes, all that stuff that is kind of forgotten about now and got thrown away. That's that's the things I really love. Ah, oh, the Death Star. My son has got that light in his bedroom. It took ages to put together and build, uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's up there and it does look absolutely fantastic. I mean, the, all my lot watch it. My sons absolutely love it. My husband loves it. Um, but there's always some sort of kind of like a discussion about the different films. Do you like the newer ones? Uh, it's Star Wars and I find something to love in all of it. I mean, for me... I'm of the generation that grew up with the first trilogy, so that, that will always be the benchmark. But even some of the sillier moments in the prequels or, um, you know, some of the missteps with, with the later films, I, I can forgive them because, like I say, I can always find something in, in, a, in a film or a show or a comic or a book. But, you know, it, it's Star Wars and, and it's something that I've been into and, and I'm invested in. Now, is there one particular one that you've watched more of? Because do you have a favourite? Um, yeah, I think probably the very first one, Star Wars, the original movie where it all began. Um, a lot of fans, certainly my generation, will tell you Empire Strikes Back. It's slightly darker, slightly more adult, a bit more to it. But I, I still like the fun and the adventure of that very first movie. How many times do you think you've watched them? <laughs> I've lost count. They're, they're a real comfort blanket for me. You know, if I'm feeling it a bit, I'll put it on in the background and it's just sort of a cosy thing to have on. Um, I can tell you how many times I've seen it. Do you know what? I've got to say, you sound like me with uh, Lord of the Rings. 
if I'm if I come in in a bad mood or if I'm feeling a little bit sad, my son will be like, "It's all right, Mum. Just sit there. Let's <laughs> let's let's put Lord of the Rings on and uh, and off you go." And then he'll pat me on the head and leave me to it. And I'm sat there, there with you the experience. <laughs> You've always got that one film that you come back to, even though you could turn the sound down. You know all the words, but it's just Absolutely. that it just takes it out of you, doesn't it? Takes you out of yourself and uh, back into a nice mood again. Now, th this merchandise, I mean, some of it's worth quite a bit of money, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Um, you know, the, the, the kids that played with those toys, particularly are now of, a, of an age where they've got some disposable income and they're trying to recapture some of their youth. They're trying to uh, you know, buy the things that they have never bought for Christmas. <laughs> and there are, like in any field of collecting, there are things that are super rare, that go for lots and lots of money. So the figures that we bought for, you know, one pound fifty nine hour, in which they were back in the uh, in the early eighties, are now worth you know, three figures and more. Goodness me! And I bet you that some of these kids had those things, trashed them, the dog chewed them, and uh, now they're looking at what they're worth, thinking, "Blimey, I should have left that in the box." It's it's a familiar story, but that's why they are worth the money they are because people did rip them open on Christmas morning and played with them in the garden, and you know it's so. Now we're adults; we want the pristine ones. Condition is important, and you can it can it can add a naught to something if it's sealed and in its box. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very mature market, really, and I think a lot of investors are getting switched onto it. So a lot of people from outside the. The Star Wars fandom, I think, going, you know, I could invest a few thousand pounds in this today and it might double its money in a few years. Is there one bit of merchandise that you don't have, that you've got your eye on, that you're constantly seeking out, thinking, I need that, I need that? <laughs> you know, this, is, this, is very, um, this is very neat, but I mentioned uh, just now the, the action transfers. So these were you know, back in the days before video. You know, the way you relive the film was with your toys, but with other things like comics, but wood down transfers for people who, <laughs> who are perhaps uh, younger than me were a technique where you could get little, they're almost like stickers that you would place on a background and you would rub over with a pencil and it would position a character or a spaceship or a robot onto a background. And I was mad about these when I was a kid. And I managed to find the store displays. This would have been a little box with the backing card with all the characters on there, bright colours, beautiful object that would have gone on the newsagent's counter. Um, and I've got one of those, and they did two sizes. They did a big one and they did a small one. And I would love a small countertop display. <laughs> oh, right. Well, that's 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 one to aim for then. If any of our listeners know where one is, <laughs> they can tip us off. Now, Craig, tell me about your podcast. Yeah, so I'm on a podcast with a, a group of other fans. We're called Generation Skywalker. We are all collectors. That's how we all met each other. That's what, how we all know each other. But we love the films. So we talk about collecting. We talk about collecting the vintage items. And when we say vintage, we mean things that were made before 1985. That's how collectors will, um, will, will class vintage. But also modern collectibles. So as you can imagine... There are some beautiful, amazing Star Wars collectibles being made right now that that have got today's technology, and they look like little shrunk down characters from the movies. <laughs> um, but we also talk about other things. So, like I say, we're fans of the films, so we'll discuss trailers. We talk about Star Wars beers. Uh, we went to so now you know, events are starting to happen again, which is an important part of what we do. So we were down at an event um, just before Christmas in Fording Bridge in the New Forest. And we were there interviewing people, filming it, and we can put a show together and let people who were, you know, couldn't get to the event experience it. Right. Tell, tell people where they can find this podcast then and what it's called. So it's Generation Skywalker and we are at www.generationskywalker.com and we've got podcasts on there you can listen to in the car or while you're jogging. You can watch enhanced versions of the podcast. So... What we talk about a lot of the time is very visual and you often want to think, what does that look like? So you can go on YouTube and you can see uh, the things we talk about as we talk about them. We're on all the usual social medias. We do unboxings of things and we cover events. So there's a whole load of stuff that you can go and explore. Um, yeah, we've, we've opened the door so people can just go through and, uh, you know, <laughs> browse to their heart's content. Now, tell me before I let you go, Craig, what's better, your Chewbacca or your Yoda impression? And they're both terrible. I'll do you an Obi-Wan. Go on, go on. 
That's the name I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> OK, we'll, we'll throw it out to the audience to see whether or not they can do the others. Listen, it's been a delight talking to you, Craig, and uh, thanks very much for coming on, OK? <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Bye. I don't know if that was good or not, because do, do you know what Yoda sounds like? <laughs> yes, can I just say, uh, my favourite part of uh, sharing the evening with you today is before the show when I said, ask that question, and you were like, who's Chewbacca? You don't even know who Chewbacca is. <laughs> No, I know. I've just Googled a picture because his name is uh, Craig Spivy. Yeah. Spivy. And uh, I've Googled a picture and I'm like, is this him, look, with this gold thing? C-3PO. <laughs> yes. I mean, someone might correct me and say it's R2-D2, but it's one of the two anyway. <laughs> right, OK. 